I was saying that Ghana is one of the few countries where water only flows upwards. Hmm. If you are down there, you are not going to get some. Yeah. That typifies the structural inequality we are confronted with. So let's look at it this way. Um, whoever wins this election is going to face significant challenges um, because we don't have the fiscal space. In fact, Kojo, there is no institution in Ghana that you can point to right now that gives hope, that is well managed, that we can use as a starting point. There isn't any. Not the central bank with, with the worthless balance sheet. <laughs> Not ECG and the rest of them. So I think that it's going to be challenging. But what will be needful, a lot has been said about the challenges, but what will be needful will be the next government putting a credible leadership on the table that will generate hope and confidence and say that, you know what, we have seen the deficiencies. We are building forward better. This is our promise. This is the leadership we are putting on the table. What do we mean credible leadership? Look, Kojo, in Africa today, economists are talking about leadership much more than motivational speakers. <laughs> because the starting point is effective leadership. Effective leaders will put the right structures and governance in place. So you can link effective leadership to good governance. It's not only at the, at, the, at the national level, but of course, effective leadership at the household and private sector level, complementary, is very important. So what, what, what kind of effective leadership should we put on the table? I am not expecting any serious party that will win this year's election to assemble a, a cabinet or a, a government size of more than 40 ministers, then you are not serious. Hmm. Then you are not sympathizing with the people. Because the point is that you don't have the fiscal space. So you have to adopt a lean, low-cost, efficient approach to delivery of public service. It will not happen in a year. And whilst I say so, Kodo, let's bear hmm. in mind that economic transformation, minimum, it will not take us less than 15 years of wow. doing the right things consistently. So consistently. even if we do not everything right. Two years and then two years off. No. Consistently. That is where you will see the effect of leadership through good governance and then economic growth and economic development and sustainable development manifesting in the lives of ordinary Ghanaians. Prof, I want to get some clarity from what you just said. You're basically saying that even if we make no more mistakes, we get everything absolutely correct from now on. We become perfect human beings and get every decision right from today onwards. It would not take less than 15 years yes. for us to recover from the hole we are in. Yes. That is, if we're doing the right thing consistently, you know, reforms are more effective if they are bundled together and they reinforce each other. Mm. So let's bear that in mind. And which also means that we require a certain level of patience. Without a good appreciation of this, these are democracy of four-year term, four-year term, and all of that really does not allow us to put in place measures that will bear medium to long-term effect. So, what have we done? Hmm. With the recovery gov government is celebrated. Do you know what we have done? We ha when you look at the measures the IMF uh, program is implementing, together hmm. with what uh, additional measures government is implementing, you will see that we are actually compromising our medium to, to long-term survivability 
for short-term praise. That is what we have done. We treasure short-term praise. And therefore, we are undermining the, the, the long-term growth potential for short-term praise. Why am I saying so? Could you, and you will see it very soon. If you look at the, the, the and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Ken Thompson and then Salom have also spoken about the painful adjustment we've had to go through in order to have this limited recovery. In fact, by far, is the most expensive and pricey economic recovery in all our history since independence. You can check the data. That's a fact. Mm. Okay. So if, if you look at the fiscal relief from the domestic debt restructuring, I've said this before, and then also the external debt restructuring, approximately 90% of the relief are all going to be utilized by 2026, while the IMF supported program is in force. This is designed to make sure that the IMF supported program has enough space to be able to deliver on its objectives. Mm -hmm. The question is, what happens after 2026? Hmm. What is the sustainability of this short-term praise? Those are the things. So I think we need to have a long-term view to our yeah. approach to economic transformation and inclusive productivity growth. This is not something that is going to happen in a week, in a year, or in four years. But what is important is the fact that we have credible leadership on the table, credible leadership that says no to corruption in any form that it, it appears. Lean government, cost efficiency, right, and all of that. So once you can do that consistently, you will begin to see how the macro numbers will begin to realign, and then it will begin to also trickle down to the micro and the household level. So patience is important, right. but because, but if we don't start doing the right things, so then the the fifteen years will even be longer. That, that, that is a fact, and right. let's let's bear in mind that what we are going through, it will only take death to separate some people from it. Wow. Wow. They cannot recover. They cannot recover from this. Look, Kojo, the, the, the World Bank told us that in 2022, the, world, the central bank inspired inflation pushed over 850,000 people into poverty. Hmm. Since then, more people have been joining that group. What, what are we seeing? Look, let, let's go into the granular data a bit. Maybe it will help us. Could you pre-COVID economic fundamentals, where inflation was 7.9% at some point in time before COVID and all of that. If you look at that data, you realize that there was practically no difference between food inflation and non-food inflation. But let's look at post-COVID recovery that we are celebrating now. You see how COVID actually exposed our food vulnerability. So right from COVID, we saw food inflation rising significantly, far above non-food inflation. Then we also saw that the regional district level differences in price development also started magnifying. So this is a country where income levels are very low, and 42 to 44 percent of household expenditure is on food, and food inflation has gone up significantly. Even let's even say that this is recovery we should celebrate. If you, if you come to terms with the fact that between October last year and October this year, prices on the average have risen by 22.1%, you cannot celebrate this. It will only take average people to celebrate this average as outstanding. <laughs> by what standard? It's still very high. What hmm. can you do in an economy with an inflation of 22.1% when the city has lost more than 25% of its assigned value from the beginning of the year? So it's even difficult planning. Look, when you submit a bid today, it cannot be valid beyond two weeks. Hmm. Oh, wow. So you can't, you can't submit a tender mm -hmm. and, and, and bet on your pricing mm -hmm. for beyond two weeks. So what it means is that if you invest beyond a two-week period, chances are that it's going to affect you. <laughs> and we need to invest for long term. People need to plan for long term. So we are denying businesses, individuals, the ability to plan for the long term 
and commit to long-term investment. Mm -hmm. See what the banks are also doing. They will prefer to learn short so that they benefit from repricing. Because the further you look into the future, the more darkness you see. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, not yeah. helpful. Wow. A nation, we should not take our people through this. <laughs> and this is an indictment on leadership. And I'm a bit disappointed in the MPP. And let me say this. And I want to ask Ghanaians to forgive me in advance. And Kudo, do you know why I'm asking for forgiveness in advance? Yeah, tell us. If you look at the assembly of the MPP and the intelligence and the knowledge base of the party, typically you could say that the MPP holds the best right to Ghana's economic management. Mm. How do you deliver something like this on the table? Are we not ashamed? For all that we know, for all that we have studied, oh, for God's sake, and we have traveled, we have seen what, what has been happening elsewhere. Haven't we been to Tokyo? Haven't we been to Singapore? Haven't we been to UK? Haven't we seen things? Haven't we seen how they've made life user-friendly for their people? Mm. Why do we do exactly the opposite here? Let me tell you something. In Hosea 4, 6, the scripture says that for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Mm. But Ghana is perishing not because of lack of knowledge. We are perishing out of willful act because we don't love one another. You may know so much, but if you don't mean for will, if you don't mean well for people, your knowledge will deliver less outcome. It's wickedness. What we are seeing here is wickedness. Exactly what some Ghanaians went through during the slave trade. To the extent that there were some people who were benefiting from the slave trade, it was okay to allow it to continue. While the majority look on. This is what we have done to ourselves. Any Ghanaian who is in any position, all that he or she is looking at is how I can protect my interests and my family and probably my friends for the foreseeable future. It's not about how I can leave a legacy for people to be happy. Hmm. What are we leaving behind for the next generation? Should the next generation feel sorry that we came ahead of them? Look at what we've done to our water bodies. We expect the IMF and the World Bank to come and tell us that, that we need to manage our environment well. Come on. Why are we giving more evidence to the fact that the black race is just incapable? 